Hey guys, welcome to the Dark Tetradulies Guide. If you're new here, my name's Chase, and I'm a competitive Splatoon player who specializes in the Dually weapon class. While I do use all of the different types of Duallys, there is one that I use far more than the rest. That of course being the Tetradulies. Today, we're going to cover all the ins and outs of this weapon ranging from its strengths and weaknesses to advanced techniques and gear recommendations. Before we start though, I need to share a couple disclaimers. I'm going to just say this right now. Motion controls are mandatory for using tetradulies. The reason I say this is because your aim needs to be extremely precise with some of the rapid movements that are required for this weapon. So yeah, a lot of the things that I say in this guide are under the assumption that you are using motion controls. Second, I'm more than aware that tetradulies technically slide rather than roll, but for consistency's sake among all of the dualies, I will just be referring to it as a dodge roll. I hope you understand. Lastly, I want to give a huge shout out to KamiPenguin02 on Twitter. He's also a fellow tetradulie main, and he helped me out a ton with this guide. Making this video was an incredibly daunting task, so I'm very thankful that he stepped up and assisted me in this project. Alright, this is going to be a long video, so I hope you guys are ready. Let's do it. Alright, so let's start with the basics. What are the Tetradulies? Well, aesthetically, they're supposed to be basketball shoe soles. The weapon is made by the in-game brand called Tentatech, which is sort of like the Adidas of Splatoon, so it makes sense. Gameplay-wise, the most obvious feature that the Tetradulies have is that they're able to roll four times, while every other dually in the game can only roll twice. You can also shoot while you're rolling. However, this all comes at the cost of having a ton of end lag once your four rolls are used. The Dark Tetradulies have Autobomb as its sub-weapon and Splashdown as its special. This kit is pretty lackluster, but we'll get to that later. I'll now quickly list off a few other important things to know. The Tetradulies are a middleweight weapon, so it won't be receiving any speed changes that a light or heavyweight weapon would. When shooting normally, you will have two individual reticles. After a dodge roll, both of the reticles will merge into one improving your accuracy significantly. Your fire rate will also be increased by 20%. This is commonly known as turret mode, and that's how I'm going to be referring to it for the remainder of this guide. Keep in mind that these benefits will only activate during the end lag from a dodge roll, not during a dodge roll itself. So, as I said, this weapon's main attribute is that it's the one dually that's able to roll four times. This is extremely useful as you can confuse many opponents by essentially just rolling all over the place. Another key strength that I want to share is something that a lot of people seem to overlook, which is that Tatcha Duallys are one of the few weapons in the game that aren't restricted by turf control. Your four dodge rolls can give you about two to three seconds of pure rolling, which is actually a lengthy amount of time when you're mid-fight. This leads me into the last strength that I want to cover, which is that Tetras can actually shoot while it's rolling, something that no other dually is capable of. Depending on whether an opponent focuses you or ignores you, you can either serve as a distraction and create openings for your teammates, or simply pick people off on your own. This gives Tetras the ability to switch roles between a skirmisher and a slayer through creating and capitalizing on its own openings. Alright, so it's no secret that this weapon has a ton of weaknesses. The basic downfalls of this weapon really revolve around its end lag after using 4 rolls. Once you exhaust those 4 rolls, it feels like you are stuck there for an eternity. The truth is that it's actually 44 frames, so not an eternity, but that is a decent amount of time for you to be stuck in one spot. Because of this, you need to be strategic with where you try to roll, which I'll cover more in depth later on in the video. One quick thing that I want to note is that the end lag is the same regardless of how many rolls you decide to use. 
4 is the maximum, but if you decide to only roll once or twice, you're still going to have to endure the 44 frames of end lag. As for other weaknesses, Tetras also have extremely bad shot spread RNG when in its standard firing mode. It shouldn't matter too much in the long run since you're mostly going to be rolling around with this thing, but there are times where you're not able to roll, like if you're on a narrow elevated platform, and you can definitely feel the inaccuracy in these scenarios. Tetras also have a pretty bad damage output, as one shot only inflicts 28 points of damage, which isn't even enough to break ink armor in one hit without running main power up. Not to mention that its shots come out very slowly compared to other frontliners while mid-roll. Another thing that holds back the Dark Tetra Duelies is its kit. As I mentioned earlier, this thing has Auto Bomb as its sub-weapon and Splashdown as its special weapon. Auto Bomb in itself isn't a terrible sub-weapon for Tetras. It could be better, but it could definitely be worse. The main issue here is Splashdown, which if you've played with any decent players in this game, you'd know it's super easy to shoot down. Many competitive players say that Splashdown is the worst special in the game, and I have to agree with that. However, Splashdown does have its uses, which I'll cover a bit later on. Okay, so now that we've covered the pros and cons of the weapon, we can start getting into its matchups. I'm going to be making a follow-up video on this topic soon, which is going to go in-depth on every single Tetra matchup in the game. Now obviously, I couldn't include that here, because if I did, this video would literally be 3 hours long. But what I'll do right now is cover some of the most important Tetra matchups, both good and bad. Let's start with some notable weapons that Tetras actually have a winning matchup against. Perhaps the most prominent example of this is the H3 Nozzle Nose. The reason H3 has such a hard time dealing with Tetra is a combination of Tetra's mobility and H3's slow fire rate. The chance of an H3 actually hitting all three bursts on you while you're mid-roll is pretty unlikely, so you'll emerge victorious in most of these encounters. Another great matchup for Tetra Duelies is the Spidershot Junior. While a Junior has a much better fire rate than an H3, it lacks in the range and accuracy departments. If you're in a 1v1 with a Junior, they're going to have to get lucky with their shot spread to actually land some shots on you, not to mention they need to hit you four times. Plus, if they try and escape, that's an easy turret mode kill. Tetra Duelies have several other good matchups, mostly for similar reasons. Either these weapons have a slow fire rate, or they have poor range slash damage output. However, do keep in mind that just because these are good matchups, doesn't prevent you from getting outplayed. Now, I'm going to cover some of Tetra Duelies' worst matchups. Tetra Duelies struggle against anything with long range and a high damage output, so things like K-Pro, Nautilus, and Chargers are definitely going to give you some trouble. Your best solution to dealing with these weapons is to simply just try and take cover if you find yourself in their line of sight. Very rarely should you ever try and rush these guys head on. But it's not just long ranged weapons that Tetras have a rough time with, because there's some shorter ranged weapons that can also give Tetra Duly some trouble. The prime examples that come to my head are Tri Slosher, Kensa 52 Gal, and Octobrush. Both the 52 Gal and Tri Slosher have fast kill times, so if they're in range and start shooting at you first, there's really not much you can do. Plus, the Kensa 52 Gal's kit cripples Tetras even more, as the splash wall can completely block you out. You definitely still have a chance of winning against these weapons though. You just need to try and be smart and predict their movements by either spacing them out or baiting them. While Tetras do have a lot of losing matchups, some of these can potentially be worked around by understanding what your opponent wants to do and defensively responding before they actually do it. In other words, care about the future, and play defense proactively. One weapon that you can't win against is what I consider to be the Tetra Duelies worst matchup, the dreaded Bamboozler. This weapon can easily just charge a shot and hit you mid-roll, and on top of that, they have a high chance of one-shotting you because of their ability to stack a main power-up. If you ever see a Bamboozler pointing their laser at you, run away. Don't take a fight that you have a 5% chance of winning. So, an important skill that you need to have for any dually is the ability to adjust your aim during a dodge roll. However, this might be the most important for tetra duelies, given the fact that you can shoot while you roll. This isn't something that will take you too long to learn, it just comes with practice. A good way to practice it though is just by doing single rolls near the dummies in the training room and keeping your reticle on them. So, 
So now, it's time to put that last technique to the test. Except now you'll be rolling multiple times. This one skill is going to serve as your foundation for succeeding with this weapon. In the training room, pick a dummy and roll four times in one direction beside it, trying your best to keep your reticle on the dummy as best as you can. If you're rolling to the left of the dummy, then you should also be simultaneously aiming your controller to the right to keep your reticle on the target, and vice versa if you're rolling to the right. So this is pretty much the same thing, except a little bit harder. So instead of picking one direction to keep rolling, this time I want you to roll once to the left of a dummy, then immediately roll back to the right, then left, then right again, all while simultaneously keeping your reticle on the target. Obviously, you could choose to roll right then left if you want to, it doesn't really matter. These last two techniques I just showed are extremely important, and they're both things that you should do while warming up every time you play. This is a pretty simple and straightforward technique, but something that often gets overlooked. If you're getting ready to use your splashdown, try throwing an auto bomb first if you have enough ink. Using your special in this game automatically refills your ink tank, so you can pretty much just get a double auto bomb for free with this simple combo, assuming your splashdown doesn't get cancelled, of course. This is another simple technique that a lot of lower level players don't do. If there's a ton of enemy ink around you, and you have a suspicion that an enemy may be sharking in the area, just throw an auto bomb. If no one's sharking, the bomb will just explode. If there is someone sharking, the bomb will start moving in their direction. Use the auto bomb to your advantage. A key aspect of being effective with Tetra Duelies is having the ability to decide when you should utilize your turret mode. As mentioned earlier, once you exhaust your 4 rolls, or stop mid roll chain, you'll be locked in place for 44 frames, and during this period, your accuracy and fire rate will be increased. This will make it easier to track and kill opponents, at the cost of your mobility. One thing to note is that even after the 44 frames of end lag expire, you have the choice of starting another roll chain or remaining in turret mode. There's quite a few scenarios where choosing to stay in turret mode is more beneficial than starting another roll chain. These include when an opponent is swimming, when you're fighting at max range, or if you're already in a bad situation and you're just trying to go for a trade before dying. The increased accuracy and fire rate from turret mode will help in these situations, as you can track swimming opponents better, and have a faster kill time for falloff shots. It's hard for me to perfectly explain every single scenario where it's optimal to use turret mode, but the more you use Tetra Duelies, the more natural it will become. Alright, so jumping into rolling is a pretty situational technique, but it can definitely help in some circumstances. The main reason for wanting to do this is that if you're able to hit your enemy once or twice while you're jumping, this means that you'll have to hit them less once you start rolling. The less you have to damage an opponent during a roll chain, the better, because if you exhaust all four of your rolls and your opponent is still alive, this puts you in a bad spot. Plus, even though Tetris have pretty bad RNG when it comes to standard firing, and even worse RNG when you jump, the weapon will surprise you sometimes. I've had instances where I've jumped and I hit all four of my shots without having to roll once. Now obviously, the chance of this actually happening is really low, and you shouldn't rely on it, but trying it once in a while to change up your gameplay can be beneficial. One other fun thing that you can do with this is jump over charger shots like you can see here. From my experience, this actually has a fairly high success rate, so if you see a charger aiming the laser at you, this might be something you can consider going for. One eighties are a skill that's extremely hard to master in Splatoon, but with enough practice, these can get you out of some crazy situations, and also provide some pretty cool Twitter clips. While one eighties are good to know for any weapon, they're especially helpful on Tetras. A lot of the time, you're going to be focused on one person while you're rolling around, but chances are that if you're facing a skilled team, another enemy is going to come try and help their teammate. This is where one eighties can come in handy, because once you finish off one person you can quickly just snap around and change targets. Now obviously, you need some pretty darn good aim to pull these off. 
A good way to train these is just by positioning yourself between two dummies and targeting one of them. As you take out one dummy, quickly snap around and try your best to land your reticle on the dummy behind you. It's going to be rough at first, but the more you drill it, the better you'll get. One thing to note here is that the higher sensitivity you play with, the easier 180s will become. Being able to change your focus from one target to another during a roll chain is a great skill to have. A good example where this can be useful is if you're trying to aim at someone who isn't shooting at you, but you then realize that another enemy is shooting at you at the same time from another direction. With this skill, you'll quickly be able to shift your aim to the more threatening enemy. Also, as you get more experience handling 1v2s, you'll start to notice that whichever enemy isn't currently being targeted by you won't be focusing on their own dodging and movement, so catching them off guard by changing targets can quickly turn the battle to be in your favor. This one may seem a little obvious, but it's something that a lot of lower level players don't really do. Change up your roll patterns. Don't constantly roll four times in the same direction, because that's probably the most predictable roll pattern you can do with Tetras. Roll two times to the left, and then two times to the right. Or, roll once to the left, twice to the right, and then left again. There are so many different combinations you can do, and the more you play, the easier it will become to decide what the most effective roll pattern will be in a given situation. This is another very situational skill, but incorporating it into your gameplay can potentially save you from some tight spots. Lots of players know that Tetras will be immobile after using their 4 rolls, so often what people will do is wait for your 4 rolls to end, and then attack you during your downtime. This is something that chargers tend to do especially. So if you find yourself in a situation like this where a charger is simply waiting for you to exhaust your 4 rolls, you can try and change it up. Only roll 3 times. This has the potential of throwing off the charger, and you might be able to survive. I'm not saying that doing this is going to always save you, because chances are, you're still going to die, but it's worth going for if you're not able to roll behind cover. This is a very broad technique, but it's definitely one of the most important. If you're going to play Tetra Duelies, you need to be aware of the map layout and geometry. There are going to be many situations mid-fight where you're going to have to roll backwards, roll behind a wall, or simply navigate an area so you don't fall off the stage. If you want to maximize your effectiveness with this weapon, knowing the map layout should be second nature to you. So how do you practice this one? Well obviously, the more you play, the more familiar the stages will become. But there are definitely other ways to learn the maps as well. You can simply just recon a stage when it's in the rotation, and practice dodge rolling in tricky areas around the map. Roll in different directions in different areas. Practice staying close to a wall and taking cover. Or navigate narrow surfaces. Another way of learning where the most optimal places to dodge roll are is by simply watching other high level Tetra players. In the description of this video, I'm going to include links to the channels of some of the best Japanese Tetra players. Also, you can just, you know, watch my videos. So, perhaps the most common mistake that I see lower level players make when trying to pick up Tetras is something like this. They'll spot an enemy that they want to try to take out. They then immediately rush forward and spam all four of their rolls right away when they're not even in range of touching the enemy. By this point, the enemy will have noticed you, but there's one problem. You used all four of your dodge rolls already. So now, you're just a sitting target for the enemy. Be conservative with your dodge rolls. Make sure you're actually in range to kill your opponent before all four of your dodge rolls are used. Using one or two of your rolls to close distance is fine, but you need to calculate how far away you are from your opponent, so that you still have some rolls left over for when you're actually fighting them. Another downside to spamming your rolls is that you'll always suffer from poor accuracy. Entering turret mode periodically will help you increase your fire rate when it's necessary, and changing your timing will punish enemies who always try to predict your rolls instead of aiming on reaction. This is something that can be said about any weapon in this game, but I do feel that I need to include it here. While auto bombs can be helpful for scouting people out or just forcing someone to move, please don't spam them. 
Tetras do have a pretty decent ink consumption, as a dodge roll only takes 3% of your ink capacity, but after you throw an auto bomb, it's still very easy to run out of ink mid-fight. Try your best to recover ink after tossing an auto bomb before taking any fights. This kind of goes back to one of the advanced techniques I was talking about, which is knowing the map geometry. While rolling with tetras is pretty much necessary for being effective, there are some areas where it's extremely hard to pull off. Good examples of this are the stacks in Macklemart, this thing on Wahoo World, or majority of the map on Black Belly Skate Park. If you try and roll in these areas, it's very easy to just roll off, resulting in you being in a bad position. I'm not saying that rolling in these areas is impossible, but it takes a lot of calculation and precise movement, which can be difficult to pull off mid-battle. So my advice for this is to just try and avoid these areas as much as you can. But if you do find yourself in these areas, you might be better off just trying to use the standard firing mode. You all knew it was coming, but I gotta say it. Panic splashdowning? Don't do it. Splashdown is extremely easy to shoot out of the air, and Tetras are a weapon that's going to be taking a lot of chip damage during a fight, which makes it even easier to cancel your splashdown. The best way to use splashdown on Tetras is by either super jumping with it, using it for paint around you, using it to destroy bombs around the area, or using it for an ink refill. If you really want to use splashdown in a fight, you should make sure that you break the line of sight using the extra height or roll backwards to space yourself away from the enemy. As a general rule, never use splashdown if you're facing an enemy that outranges you. Since splashdown has the same max range as tetras, any weapons that outrange you will also be able to safely challenge the splashdown without getting damaged. Another bad habit with tetra players is not using your full range. Although tetras have a similar range to most slayers, using falloff damage from max range allows you to outrange almost every other frontline in the game. This means that a lot of terrible matchups for tetras like K52 Gal, Tri Slosher, Horizontal Roller Flicks, and Neo Splash Dramatic can all be winnable while using Tetra's maximum range. Furthermore, this means that you can effectively contest popular midline weapons like Dually Squelchers, H3, and Slosher with one roll. Just be mindful of if the fight is worth taking in the first place. Since Tetras have a slower shot velocity compared to other weapons, fighting at max range makes it easier to activate quick respawn in trades, and it's easier to safely disengage from fights. Also, if you find yourself misspaced, you can still roll backward and even kill enemies with your mid-roll shots as you retreat. This is a pretty broad one, but probably the most common mistake. I'll touch on this a bit more later when we talk about gear. But for now, I'll just say, people who play Tetras, no matter of skill level, will sometimes form a habit of unproductive feeding. What this means is that you're essentially just constantly rushing into the enemy, picking fights that aren't in your favor, and consistently dying without really helping your team. It's very easy to form this habit because Tetras don't require anything like gear, team support, or turf control to still function properly. This makes overextending very easy, and playing like this makes it extremely difficult for your teammates to help you and for you to help them. Even though you can dodge roll 4 times through enemy ink, your teammates are still hindered with their movement, and sometimes, you can just completely break line of sight with them, which leaves you alone in enemy territory. Feeding is okay on Tetras, but you still need to be smart and productive with it. So for sensitivity, you've probably heard this before, but you can use whatever you want. Sensitivity is something that's different for everybody, so test different things out and see what feels comfortable for you. However, something that I want you guys to know is that most top Tetra players, as well as myself, use max sensitivity, also known as plus 5 plus 5. The reason for this is that as stated earlier, Tetra Duelies are forced to make a lot of quick and dynamic movements. If you can master the max sensitivity, it will definitely help with this. Again though, sensitivity is subjective, and what works for some, won't work for others. When it comes to gear for the Dark Tetra Duelies, there are two routes you can take. You can take the more common route, which is running a full quick respawn build. Or, you can go with a full main power up build. I'm going to cover both of these in depth right now, 
and I will also mention some alternative abilities that you can consider running based on preference. Alright, so I'm not going to go too in depth right now as to why Quick Respawn is a good ability because I'm going to be making a whole video discussing this topic soon. But just know this, Tetra Duelies are a weapon that doesn't need any specific gear perks to help it out during fights. The base weapon is honestly really good on its own, so it doesn't need speed or ink efficiency perks like some other weapons do. However, as I mentioned earlier, Tetra Duelies are destined to die a lot just because of the very aggressive positions that the weapon is forced to take. It doesn't matter what you run, because there is no ability that's going to save you from dying to the many bad matchups that Tetra Duelies have. So with this knowledge, it kind of makes a lot of sense to run Quick Respawn. Clearly, I'm not the only one who thinks this way, because if you run into any good Tetra players online, chances are that their gear build looks something like this. Running a crap ton of Quick Respawn allows Tetras to play how they're supposed to be played, confidently and dangerously. With all of this Quick Respawn serving as a safety net, this will allow you to push forward, make openings for your team, and take fights that aren't directly in your favor. However, do note one thing. Just because you're running all of this Quick Respawn, doesn't mean that you shouldn't play smart. A lot of Tetra players who run builds like this seem to have this thought process where they think they can just take any fight they want throughout a game and just keep constantly dying without really helping their team. Now obviously, this isn't the case. The advice that I have is to keep track of when your quick respawn will and won't activate. If you haven't gotten a kill after your most recent respawn, then you can afford to take some non-favorable fights since you'll just respawn in about 3 seconds and you can stealth jump back in right away. But if your quick respawn won't activate, play a little more safely. Don't blindly hold forward. Think about your engagement and contemplate if you can actually win it. Alright, so that's my little spiel about quick respawn, but again, I'll be making a video soon that goes more in depth about quick respawn and why it's so effective. But let's finish talking about this gear build. So if you're going for a build like this, I'd recommend running around 4 mains worth of quick respawn. There's no specific amount that's optimal, but just go for something like this. So you have your quick respawn, but what else should you run? Well, I'd argue that stealth jump is perhaps the most necessary ability for tetra duelies. Given how much this weapon dies, you're going to be put in situations where you need to jump back into your teammates to maintain pressure. Plus, stealth jump and quick respawn kind of go hand in hand, they complement each other very well. So that makes up the main meat of the quick respawn build. You could literally just run stealth jump and the rest of your gear set is made up of entirely quick respawn. But in my opinion, sacrificing a couple subs of quick respawn for some other abilities is definitely worth it. I would recommend these other abilities to be one sub of bomb defense and one or two subs of quick super jump. You could also run two subs of swim speed if you want, but run no more than that. And there you have it, the quick respawn build. Again, there's no specific amount of quick respawn that's considered optimal, but just try and aim for it to be around this amount. It's up to you what you want to put for those few extra subs. Alright, so next up we have the less popular Tetra Duelie build, being the main power up build. Similar to some other weapons, main power up gives Tetra Duelies increased damage. If you run enough of it, you can actually deal 33.2 damage per shot which will result in you being able to kill opponents in 3 shots majority of the time. So on paper, this sounds great, like why wouldn't you run this build? Well, while it can be good, it definitely has its downfalls. The most obvious problem with running this MPU build is that you no longer have that safety net in a quick respawn, which allows Tetras to play a bit dangerously. Without that safety net, you're forced to play a lot safer. You can no longer just rush into any fight that you please, because if you die with this build, you're getting a normal respawn time every single death. The other issue with this build is that it leaves very little room for running anything else. If you run the amount of MPU required to give you the 3 shot potential, this only leaves you with 1 main and 1 sub left over. In my opinion, you should still be running stealth jump, just because it pairs so nicely with tetra duelies. As for the 1 sub, it's up to you. I would highly recommend putting bomb defense there as one sub of bomb defense is extremely effective, but you could also put a sub of quick super jump if you really like having faster jumps. So to conclude, the main power up build for Tetra Duelies is a viable option, but you'll have to play smart. 
Just because you're able to 3-shot people doesn't change the fact that Tetris have a lot of poor matchups. The reason why a quick respawn build is more popular is because most people determine that ultimately, they can be more effective by getting fast respawns compared to having a 3-shot potential. One other kind of build to note that's pretty common is a sort of hybrid between the QR and MPU builds. This build runs just enough MPU to reach 30 damage, which will let you break ink armor in one hit. While this isn't necessary, this will definitely help you out in some situations, since Tetras do struggle dealing with ink armor on their own. So which one of these builds should you use? Well, if you're someone who is just starting out with the weapon, I highly recommend going for the hybrid build. This is because it serves as a good learning tool for learning bad matchups and getting used to the movement in-game. Once you become experienced with the weapon and learn how certain matchups work as well as how the weapon functions, you can create a full MPU build. After that, it's just a matter of preference for which one you prefer to use. As for me, I tend to run this hybrid build on spot zones since ink armor is the most obnoxious in this mode. For all the other modes, I usually run a full quick respawn build or occasionally the full main power up build. Well, there it is. We're done. If you made it to the end of this whole thing, I just have one thing to say. Thank you. Thank you, not only for watching this video and supporting my channel, but also for just wanting to learn more about this weapon. In my opinion, Tetra Duelies are the most fun weapon to use in Splatoon 2. Sure, I might be a little biased, but I have played a decent amount with a lot of weapons in this game, and I can confidently say that nothing gets my adrenaline pumping quite like Tetra Duelies. Sure, the weapon may have a few shortcomings. It may have some of the worst matchups in the game, and it may require some of the most practice out of any weapon to be good at. But don't let that deter you. Keep practicing. Don't give up. Because I promise you, if you just put in the work, this weapon is capable of some crazy things. Remember, you don't have to use the top tier weapons in this game to do well. If you just put in the time, you can make almost anything work. And the Tetra Duelies are no exception. <laughs>